Hello and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today on this video we are going to uh, look at the Bible study and revelation regarding the counsel of the Lord. Okay, Captain's voice, the Heavenly Father, is giving us a uh, revelation regarding his counsel and how significant it is in the earth. After viewing some things that I've viewed over uh, the YouTube channel and seeing some of the things that are going forward in the earth, the Holy Spirit led me over into this revelation in reference to the fact that his counsel, his advice, the things that he is saying to mankind in the earth is not being taken uh, seriously, okay, by man. And that's a problem. And the problem that it is creating is a society, unfortunately, where demons are moving and operating. And we, as the house of God, as the, as the heavens converted into the heavens by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are to stop that from going forward, okay? The, stopping the, the, uh, the mission and the agenda of evil in the land and heavenly father in the mighty 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 powerful name of Christ Jesus we as your kingdom call upon you right now heavenly father for you to rise up in the earth mightily with your warring angels oh heavenly father stand up and fight for the children in the earth oh God in Jesus Christ's mighty name oh hallelujah your future oh my God where you are manifested in them my God in Jesus Christ's mighty name Lord have mercy let your counsel go forward, Heavenly Father, mightily in the earth, in the country of the United States. Oh, my God, let it rise up, Heavenly Father. Oh, from heaven, in Jesus Christ's mighty name, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Holy Ghost, okay. So I, uh, oh, Jesus. want to uh, take you into, first and foremost, as we uh, go into this revelation regarding the counsel of the Lord, we're going to go to... The book of Acts, okay, and uh, the book of Acts is a New Testament book where the apostles, once they were converted into the kingdom, they began to go forward evangelizing and converting people into the heavens by the power of the Holy Ghost. So we're going to start here in, uh, well, actually verse 38, well, 35 is going to be the beginning of our uh, reading in chapter 5 of the book of Acts. It says, and said unto them, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. Okay, because there were some men that were getting ready to harm some of the disciples because they were preaching the word of God. So there's a group of other men who is telling them, Tell uh, you men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up, they spoke of this person called Thutis, and he was boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400 men, it says, joined themselves together, but they were slain, all of them were slain, as many as obeyed him, those that were following him, they were slain and scattered and brought to nothing, okay, brought to naught, brought to an end, because again, they were not following the counsel of God. And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people, so the man, he drew away a lot of people to follow him. He also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. So he says, and I, now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily you be found to be fighting against God. And that's what we see, unfortunately, in the earth, in this, oh my God. And we want to uh, make sure God, we want to call on the God of heaven to get the victory over this fight. The fight against evil is what it is. And it's basically a fight against God and his will and his counsel going forward in the earth for all mankind. And if actually you read this whole chapter, I just read that certain section where it speaks about what happened at the end, basically, from uh, the men wanting to harm the disciples that came to them preaching the word of God, okay? 
and I just took you to the end of what happened at the end, how they wanted to, uh, basically, like I said, they wanted to do harm to the disciples, but there was a man in the midst of them who told them to leave them alone, because if they didn't, then uh, it would be counted against them, and it would be counted as if they were fighting against God, because they, the men, the disciples were sent by God to speak what God put in them to speak regarding the kingdom of God and regarding them being uh, converted into the kingdom. They had the good news of the gospel. They were preaching it. And uh, so there were some men that were denying it, of course, and did not want to hear it, and they tried to stop them from going forward. Okay, but they informed them. Okay? In verse 39, it says, But if it be of God, if their counsel be of God, it says in verse 38, let me go back up to it, it says, Now I say unto you, refrain from these men, leave them alone, and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. You can't stop God's counsel from going forward. It stands. It stands, it stands. Hallelujah. His counsel, his word, his will. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That is why we pray, our Heavenly Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is what Jesus Christ informed us how to pray and that is what we are to pray for God's will to continually be done in the earth. Let it be done mightily God Almighty. Okay so another book I'm led over to just to speak on the counsel of the Lord let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 2 Corinthians chapter 4 And just as verses 1 and uh, 2, specifically verse 2, because this is taking us into acknowledging the counsel of the Lord through by ministry, whenever we begin to speak the word, okay? Verses 1, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, okay? We faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Okay, now here, we just wanted to explore these two verses. The Holy Spirit led me over to it, because again, the counsel of the Lord, whenever the word of God is uh, spoken without being done deceitfully uh, and it is, it is manifesting the truth then we are able to touch the conscience of man Okay, the man's conscience is then touched by the power of the Holy Spirit because that is where the Holy Spirit lives it is edified and then it is lifted up it is enhanced and it is, re it is reformed and then because that, that's where the mental process actually starts it starts in the conscience of man Okay, the conscious, we live and think from our conscious every day, okay? And that is why the power of the Holy Spirit, whenever an individual is born again, the, the uh, Holy Spirit, it baptizes you in your conscious, okay? You are initially uh, baptized in the water. The Father, we say, dip the person into the water, and we say we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost, when it baptizes an individual, their conscience is baptized. And that way, that's that little voice that you hear like whenever, or that little unction you get whenever something isn't right. Or whenever you get ready to think, you know, the devil may put something in your head to do something wrong. And you get that unction that this is not right. That is, the, that is your conscience. That is the Holy Spirit prompting your conscience and informing you and telling you that what you're doing is not right or it's not what... The will of God and it you know it's trying to lead you astray okay so when we talk about the counsel of the Lord we have to mention the conscience because the counsel of the Lord will ignite your conscious being okay it will bring it to life that is where the verse Jesus Christ said I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly because his conscious because the conscience of the Holy Spirit drops into your conscience okay and it bursts life through you 
through the power of your conscience. Alright, um, so another book I'm led to, to speak more on the counsel of the Lord is going to be into Isaiah chapter 46, Old Testament book, Isaiah. Isaiah and uh, chapter 46, and it's just one verse here we have. For the Holy Spirit decrees and declares. 46 verse 10 declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure now those are the words of the Lord my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure whether you acknowledge it whether you know it's a person that doesn't want to acknowledge God as God whether you acknowledge it or not God is not looking for man's permission to acknowledge himself in the earth okay because he created the earth he created man he created your your opinion that you have you know he gave you that opinion that you may have that it was not in agreement with god he allowed you to have that opinion um but the nevertheless he's not looking for our approval or man's approval before he gets ready to perform or do anything in the earth in specifics to his word okay and we can see that if you, look, if you look clearly, you can definitely see that in the earth. So, uh, Proverbs 19 also reminds us of that fact. And we can go over to it, Proverbs 19, verse 21, where he tells us that there are many devices in a man's heart, but nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So only the advice of the word of God. Only what God has to say regarding any specific pattern, thought process, or anything that is ever invented or created into a thought pattern, okay? It is only God's thought pattern that stands. It is only God's thought, thought pattern and process that um, comes to pass. And that that's what he's explaining to us here in this verse, uh, Proverbs 19, verse 21. That it is his word, it is what he has to say, that shall be dominant over every other force. And that is why we must rise up in the kingdom of God and begin to go forward mightily with God's word. Okay, so another scripture that will uh, give us, and actually it's going to be the Bible reading for this whole revelation is going to be in Jeremiah. So Jeremiah chapter 10 actually was the actual revelation reading for this whole revelation regarding the council, council of the Lord where there was uh, of course the house of Israel had began to fall in, into the hands of those that were uh, peddling as they say sometimes in the word of God false doctrine. Okay, information that was false and misleading and deceitful and misguiding and they were following after that particular uh, advice and it was under the advice of idol worship once again as always as we looked at the Old Testament and we've seen the children of Israel unfortunately being taken in the craftiness of evil in following idol worship but again the Lord speaks out, and this is what he says in Jeremiah chapter 10. He starts with verse 19. Woe is me, for my heart, my wound is grievous. But I said, truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled, and all my cords are broken. My children are going forth of me, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore, and to set up the curtains. For the pastors are become brutish, and have not sought the Lord, therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the brutes is come, and a great promotion, I mean a great commotion, out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah desolate, and a den of dragons. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself, for it is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Or, O Lord, 
correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that knew you not, and upon the families that call not upon thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate. Okay? So the vo the uh, verse that we want to play, pay close attention to is going to be in verse 23. Because you see here he says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Now this is Jeremiah speaking to the Lord saying this. For if he is not in man that walks to direct his steps. We don't know how to lead and guide our own life, okay? That's the point we want to take from this verse and this whole chapter because we're looking at the counsel of the Lord and how important and how in-depth it is. Because if you stop to think about before you actually came to the Lord and became a part of his kingdom, now this is to those that have been, that had to be enlightened to the word of God and to the presence of God Almighty. You may have had his presence inside of you, but you may not have even known it, okay? Because you hadn't gotten to that point where you were enlightened to be aware of it, to be made aware of it. Your conscience hadn't been opened up, okay? But once a man's conscience has been opened up to God and they are in, they have been um, enlightened by God's presence and by his word, then you begin to know, okay? You begin to know the truth of God. But there are some, again, they have not been enlightened and this verse falls into that category of the fact and the truth that God knows all of our footsteps and he has already prepared it. he is already destined for us to reach a certain journey on this earth and this particular verse 23 O oh Lord I know that the way of man is not in himself for it is not in man that walks to direct his steps O oh, Heavenly Father and that is why he, te he has sent Jesus Christ into the earth with the Lord's Prayer to tell us, lead us, guide us on how we are to pray because we don't even know exactly how to pray. And that's what uh, the disciples, that was the first thing the disciples said to Jesus Christ. Teach us how to pray. And that is what he taught with the Lord's Prayer. And uh, from there on, that's where our beginning goes forth. Okay? All right, so that's going to bring me to the end of our Bible study regarding the revelation of the counsel of the Lord and how significant, how important it is in the earth and how the impact of God's word needs to be lifted up and needs to be carried like a banner, like a, like a rainbow for real in the earth in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So I will see you on the next video as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel.